Like many of you out there, Mass Effect is one of my favorite games ever. The perfectly realized setting, the fantastic gameplay, the utterly superb soundtrack, and the cutting edge visuals at its time made it one of the best games, the best RPGs, and the best sort of space operas ever released. While the ending of Mass Effect 3 left a little bit to be desired, the trilogy as a whole is an absolute masterpiece. So it's unsurprising that Bioware and EA are looking to continue with that success with the release of Mass Effect Andromeda. Now we've been getting a drip feed of information over the last few months about this game but obviously it's coming out soon. They just released a new trailer at uh, CES this year and so what I'm going to do now is take us through everything we know about Mass Effect Andromeda after the release of that trailer. Let's get started. Perhaps the biggest surprise coming out of CES is just how soon Mass Effect is arriving. Many people were predicting April, May, June for the release of this game, but no, Mass Effect Andromeda is coming on March 21st in the United States, March 23rd everywhere else. They have confirmed it's available on all three platforms, that is PS4, Xbox and PC, and it will run in 4K on the PS4 Pro and obviously on the PC as well. In a recent statement, Bioware have also confirmed that there is no Nintendo Switch version currently planned, but you never know, that just might change. Predictably, there are a number of different editions available for the game. If you want to get a view of what they're like on PC, you can go to the Origins store and check those out. The PlayStation and Xbox versions are likely to be the same, but essentially pre-ordering gives you things like bonus armor and skins for your vehicle and a few other bits and pieces. It's worth noting that the super deluxe version of the game only provides you benefit in the multiplayer space. So if you're not really keen on the multiplayer aspect, you're probably going to want to skip that version. Finally, there is a special collector's edition of the game but that's probably not the right way to frame it because the collector's edition doesn't actually come with the game. This is the uh, Nomad which is the new vehicle available in the game, I'll speak about that soon. But you get a model Nomad, it's a fully controllable RC, controllable with an Android or iPhone device. It has a little camera at the front of it so you can actually sort of film your adventures. It's uh, 200 US dollars, it's not cheap and the game is not included. So real enthusiasts, be sure to pre-order this one. Everybody else can probably skip this one without worrying too much. Bioware has confirmed that multiplayer will be making a return, but they have not spilled any details on that yet. It's highly likely that it's going to be the same sort of Horde style format that people really enjoyed before, but uh, it's unclear how they look to ideate on this on the future. Either way, it's definitely going to be in the game, and given how close the release date is now, I'm sure we're going to start hearing details about this multiplayer mode very soon. So the first question you're probably asking yourself is, is this story related to the story of the last trilogy, that of Commander Shepard? And the firm answer is no. It's still set in the same universe, but the story is definitely separate. For that reason, it's going to be unlikely that you're going to be able to load your previous save and have it affect your game, but this is not confirmed yet. It is still a possibility. So if it's got nothing to do with the previous story, what's the deal with this one? Well, a few years prior to the events of the original Mass Effect trilogy, Earth set in motion the Andromeda Initiative, which looked to send a mothership and five arcs, each of them carrying a variety of races, to the distant Andromeda galaxy to begin colonization. Because of how far away Andromeda is, it actually took them 600 years to reach their destination, meaning that the events of this game are set 600 years after the Reaper invasion. You play the role of a path Finder, a highly trained operative whose job it is to help scout ahead for the best places to colonize once the mothership and the arcs reach the Andromeda system. It's an interesting premise that looks to borrow the best parts of the setting and the world of the previous games while striking out in its own direction in terms of new characters and storylines. So personally, I'm quite looking forward to it. 
Where in the original Mass Effect trilogy, you could play as one character, Shepard, either a male or female version, you now have the choice to play as one of the Rider twins. You choose either the boy or the girl, and depending on who you choose, the other twin actually stays in the storyline. They are actually going to remain in cryosleep for part of the story and be awake for the other part. It's unclear exactly how that's going to play out at this point. But being able to choose between two different protagonists who are likely going to have slightly different stories at some point is going to be an interesting twist on the Mass Effect formula. You are, of course, going to be joined by a cast of characters who are going to comprise your party or your squad. There are a couple of confirmed squad members at this point. There's PB, there's uh, Liam, who's human, and then there's the Krogan Drac. It's uh, unconfirmed if he's actually a member of the party, but it's pretty clear that he is at this point. And then everybody else after that is just pure guesswork, so I'm not going to talk about that here. Mass Effect games live and die by the strength of their characters, and it's always been one of the great strengths of Bioware throughout the history of all of their games. For those of you wondering if any of the old characters from the original trilogy are going to make a return, it's not confirmed. It's highly unlikely likely though. Bioware are very clear they want to strike out in their own direction with new characters. Plus it's also set 600 years after the events of the first trilogy so it's highly unlikely that someone lived that long unless they were on ice themselves. One of the things that defined the first Mass Effect game, but was less present in uh, episodes 2 and 3, was planetary exploration. In the original game, you would be able to scan different planets, land on them to collect resources, do all sorts of stuff, and that really fell by the wayside in part 2 and 3 as they focused on a much tighter narrative-driven experience. It looks like Mass Effect Andromeda is going back to its roots. The developers have been very clear that there's going to be a strong focus on planetary exploration. You are going to be driving around in your no mad you are going to be exploring different locations you are going to be doing plenty of looting and uh, gathering of different sort of materials available in those environments so you can expect some sort of exploration is it going to be no man's sky level exploration highly unlikely it's surely going to be quite limited and structured in the way that they do it but it's nice to know that it's going to be there all right, so if you've never played Mass Effect, here's the deal. It's basically a third-person action game. It does have some fairly strong cover mechanics involved in that as well. So you press up against a surface and you kind of pop to cover and you can pop back out. So in that way, it's your pretty standard run and gun, a third-person shooter. But things start to get a lot more interesting when we talk about your engineering and your biotic abilities. Engineering is sort of technology-based abilities, like the ability to blow up an enemy's shield, for example. Whereas biotics is some really funky sort of telekinetic shield, mind shield kind of stuff. Uh, that's what's made the combat of Mass Effect quite interesting over time. It's not just your standard run and gun fare. It does mix it up with some very innovative ability-based combat, and it looks like they're really doubling down on that here. The footage that you're seeing here shows the Pathfinder able to move around the map with a lot of ease, able to teleport quickly between two areas. A mix of shooting, plus biotics, plus engineering, melee attacks, it all looks very fluid, and to be honest, it actually looks like the best combat that the Mass Effect series has ever seen, which is pretty damn rare. There's also a jet pack as well, which means you can get up nice and high, nice and vertical above your targets, which is a new addition to the series. And yeah, overall, it looks like they're not really scrimping out on the combat front. It looks like they've really put a lot of work into making this look good. But similarly, it looks like they've done a fair amount of work on the RPG mechanics as well. So the broad way this works for anyone who hasn't played Mass Effect before is that you can kind of choose a class that gives you different bonuses in combat. And then once you've chosen that class, you're stuck with it the whole game. And then you can actually choose different skills and put points in those skills and sort of, you know, make them more powerful over time. What's happening now, it seems, in Mass Effect Andromeda is that you can actually change your class on the fly. So you can choose which combat benefits you are going to take into battle at any point in time and you can also choose to upgrade your skills but the skills now have individual skill trees where you have to sort of choose which branch you're going to go down so that way you can't get your hands on everything in one playthrough you'll need to go back and play it again or perhaps there's some sort of respec option available I don't know but regardless it does seem like there's plenty of customization available and it seems like there's a lot more flexibility than there was in the last game some people don't really like that extra flexibility they like the idea of having to lock in a class because they feel like like it's a deeper uh, RPG 
RPG experience. I personally don't agree. I think if I can experience all three classes and adapt based upon what my situation needs, and I kind of like that. It was a bit cool. But I don't know. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. Do you think it's good that we can now move our classes around on the fly, or do you think it's actually better that we're going to be stuck in to one class the entire game? The last thing I'll say is that the game seems to have a very strong focus on crafting. The developers did make clear that the majority of equipment that you get will be crafted by yourself. This fits very neatly with the idea of open world exploration and the need to gather resources. You're seeing here there's a pod that you're able to call down and once you do so you access a crafting menu you're able to craft weapons and armor which I think is pretty cool so long as we're not spending our entire lives running around gathering stuff then uh, this is a pretty nice addition, I think. Anyway, those are the major details from Mass Effect. If you haven't played the original Mass Effect, go and do it. It's like five bucks to buy it and it's the best five bucks you'll ever spend. Mass Effect 2 is currently available for free on the PC on the Origin platform. So just log on to Origin, download it and it will be yours. And Mass Effect Andromeda comes out the 21st of March in the US, 23rd everywhere else. I am extremely excited about it. I don't think I'm going to do a huge amount of coverage on my channel, but I think I might actually do a Let's Play, which is something I've never actually done before. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Let me know if you guys would be keen on that. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Drop it a like. If you did, be sure to subscribe to see some more Mass Effect action in the lead up. For now, guys, thanks very much for watching. Take good care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.